Hi everybody, my name is AJ Perez. I'm the chairman of EnvyBots, a Boston-based 3D printing company. Quick show of hands, who's heard of 3D printing before? Oh, heard of 3D printing? Okay, cool. I have a talk a little bit later. It's going to be an hour and a half. I'm going to keep this one as, as quick as possible. Still get the point across. It's a 20 minute discussion about my personal entrepreneurial journey. Hi Bill, he's one of my main mentors and inspirers. So uh, if you haven't already, this, he did not ask me to say this, go buy his book. It's really good. Every time we develop a new product or go into a new market, we go through the 24 steps. We might skip a few, don't get mad at us. Uh, but, but we go through the process over and over again. It's a really, really important uh, piece of information and a tool I think will be valuable in, independent of what type of business you plan to start. All right, so what I'm going to talk about today is how I started my company, how it began for me as an entrepreneur, the, my early days as an adventurepreneur. Do you guys know what's going on? My slides are getting cut off. Yeah, can't see half of it. Can you zoom out? There we go, beautiful. All right, now slide it over. Is that possible? Yep. All right, then zoom out more. Just make it a little smaller so we can see everything. God, no, she's some shit thing right. That makes no sense. It's a problem. Yeah. All right, yeah, exactly. So whoever can figure out this big problem. problem. Yeah, exactly. So that's, that's the third thing we're going to talk about is how to actually start a business. And, and in my mind, that, that starts with a problem. And then the last piece was how do we actually turn NBBots into a business. Is better? Yeah, yeah perfect. No, not perfect anymore. Okay. We're iterating. Okay. There we go. Okay, cool. I have no control. All right, can you go to the next slide? Okay. Thank you. All right, so we started NBBots out of a fraternity at MIT. You guys know the company Dropbox? Yeah. So it started out of the same bedroom as Dropbox. Oh. Not that we're doing completely different things. What we started out doing was actually addressing another problem. We built a workshop so that we could work on other ideas that we wanted to wrap a prototype. Okay, do I have control now? And in order to do so, we need to actually build a rapid prototyping environment for ourselves. So we built the workshop, and then we started building a 3D printer. And we got the 3D printer working. Uh, if Chris is in here who interviewed me earlier, this is the little corn on the cob part that I was telling you about. This is nothing special. This is the first 3D printed part we made. But this was a really, really exciting breakthrough for us. When we first did a demo, this is when we recognized the problem. We didn't develop a 3D printer just for ourselves and decide, hey, let's go and start a 3D printing company. No, we built the 3D printer for ourselves to solve a problem, which was we needed to do rapid prototyping so that we could innovate and develop new products so that we could commercialize them and bring them to market. We took the technology and demoed it at the MIT techno the tech fair, basically. And what it is, take a look at this thing. This is your quintessential prototype. It's a rat's nest of wires. It's ugly. No bells and whistles. It is. It was what Bill would call the MVP. Right. This was our minimum viable prototype, not the minimum viable product, the minimum viable prototype, to at least start getting learnings from potential customers. And when we were at this tech fair, we had people who I would consider nerds, very much like myself, who had their own 3D printer, who built it in the basement of their fraternity house or their dorm room or in a lab. They came up to us and said, "Wow, I. I mean." My 3D printer just sits there most of the time. How can I automate mine like yours? And then people like my mom came up to us who <coughs> maybe heard of 3D printing, never used one before themselves, and said, well, what's so special about this? And we said, this is the world's first fully automated cloud-connected 3D printer. And they, then we kind of decompressed what that meant and explained, you know, it's the only one that you can send jobs from a smartphone and it'll remove the part automatically and start the next job. And all of these, what we would console, call like the majority of users said, it doesn't already do that. And that was the reaction we got. And that's when we recognized that we were on to something big. The nerds said that this was the solution that they needed. And the mainstream majority said that that's how they expected the technology to work. That's when we knew we came on to something that was going to disrupt the use case of 3D printing in a very, very fundamental way. One of the keys for us was we didn't just ask a bunch of people and have a few key takeaways. It wasn't three conversations with three different people. We actually ran a survey and had over 700 responses. And in the very early days of our business, this was pretty important for us. We were a team of four engineers, right, four, four of us, and we demonstrated our ability to hustle. We demonstrated our ability to go out and market our product, or at least do 
very fundamental marketing analysis, which was to go out and do a survey. So I highly encourage everybody, if you're gonna go start a company, focus on this type of thing. Get to the minimum viable prototype, and then stop and go learn about the world because you can't build a business without customers. And you need to figure out who your customer is first things first.